to the Runner X podcast, where we talk about all things running. As many runners know, it's 90% mental. So join Coach Valerie and Coach Caroline as we go through the mental side of running. Welcome back to the Runner X podcast. I'm your host, Coach Caroline, and I'm here with Coach Valerie. Coach, we've been talking, we have a lot of members that have been with us for a while. And they've had certain races, and a lot of them are like marathon trainers or Olympic triathlon distances. Or we have one lady that she she loves like super long 60k trail runs, right? And they're at a point right now where they're they're kind of saying, "But coach, I'm not getting any faster." Talk, can you talk about that <laughs> idea for a second? Because it's really <laughs> fascinating to me, and I want to kind of talk to you about it and get into that whole mental side of what we we think that like. Distance running means I'm going to get faster, right? It's like a mental thing, right? Well, it's interesting because there's two things. One is a lot of people come into running, like we're going to say most of our runners are adult recreational runners, like found running later and immediately went right into distance. And what's interesting is if you look at professional, if the professional side of marathon, um, most athletes actually start out as uh, short distance runners. Maybe they're, um, you know, track and field and they get into like maybe 5,000 meters, then 10,000 meters, and then they kind of graduate into the marathon. So okay. a lot of our runners come in and they're like, I've just started running. I want to run a marathon. So then they immediately go straight to volume. You know, I'm just going to train this long distance. I want to keep running more. And most training plans out there, that's what they encourage, right? You go out there and you run and you just keep you know, building your base is what, what most people call it. And in a, right, by the way, right. you know, in our plan, we do the same thing. We're like once a week, you definitely have to go out and move. You just have to, it's just, that's what you're wanting to do is move these long distances. So what we do, of course, is we help make you more efficient in all of your movement. And then you start training. Like you said, a lot of these, a lot of our runners are like, I just keep wanting to run these long runs. <laughs> and then they're like, why am I not faster? So I'm like, because in order to get faster, you have to train lower mileage at higher speeds. And to do that. It's so crazy because that makes perfect sense when you say it. But as a, as a runner, um, I would have never even thought that. Like, I am so guilty of that. I'm like, oh, wow, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> Go on. You're saying no, it's, it, it's true. And, and also, again, most of us didn't start out sprinters so we don't even right. know how to run fast it's the reality right. of it most of us like started out running by signing up for an event whatever the event was and then thinking i'm just going to get through it and running training in the beginning was like i'm going to run to that tree and then i'm going to stop and walk and then i'm going to run to that next tree which by the way is still the number one way of teaching running yeah like, that's still yeah. what's out there right so you have this success in this ability to continue running. So I understand that too. How exciting to go from, I made it to the first tree to now you can run like all the way down the street. I mean, we take people through this constantly. So we know how exciting that is. And then as one lady said, now I'm greedy. Like I want to run a 60 K and I want to run faster. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, and what's interesting is from the very beginning, um, the way we teach people how to run and the way we integrate our program is we actually do a method of we start with skill because skill is priority. So you know how to move. Then we actually test that skill under intensity. We, in the beginning, really don't want people to run more than like 10 meters, 20 meters at a time for right. their skill practice, guys. So it's kind of an interval setup. And what happens is people think, well, this is just learning. It's not really yeah. running. <laughs> You know, we go through this a lot, but I tell people like, what's interesting is if you would truly train yourself for a 5k and I'm talking like to race a 5k, really feel what that feels like to work on your speed and work on your um, running technique at a higher speed. All of a sudden you'll find you one, I tell people, you get much less fearful of mileage. You get more efficient in your running overall and then take it to that 10k. You know, master that 10K, get to where you can run for an hour and feel great about it. I can run for a full hour. So then, you know, you start to have these more, again, it's all that confidence, but you're getting the endurance through the intervals. 
Yeah. And, we, and it's funny because people don't sense that. And they come I was going to say program. they don't see it at all. I know, but the all. funny part is they come through the program and it happens for them. It's like they finish and they're like, oh, I can run for 30 minutes. I'm signing up for a half marathon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then they go exactly straight. What they do. So then they get caught up in that cycle of that sensation of I just need to do more mileage. <clears throat> and by the way, what's interesting is a lot of training plans do have some kind of interval on there. So that right. is out there, guys. I know I know a lot of you are like, wait a minute, I do hill repeats or I do striders. It is out there hundred percent. It's just that, are you really doing it, you know, in a way that's helping you progress in your running? And because we work on that skill base, I'm telling you, if you can get to where you can really get a nice performance run 5k, and then you work on your 10k, and then you work on your half, it's amazing how you're right. It does make sense, but people feel like that's stepping back. And I'm like, it's really not stepping back at all. <laughs> yeah. Well, and yeah. that's one of the things I've talked with you about that I had read when I had started running before I ever met you was um, the, the idea that our cells in our body um, replicate. And, and, and again, I'm getting these kind of figures slightly off, but like your skin regenerates roughly every 21 days, every 21 to 30 days. Your muscles regenerate. Literally, you create a new muscle after about six months. But what I didn't realize that I thought was fascinating is that your bones, you think, well, it's a bone. No, your bone is still made up of cells and those have to regenerate and it takes about a year. And so people need to understand that that's what we talk about that base is it can take about a year of consistent, correct running to allow your body to run those distances of a, of a, not just a half marathon, but a full marathon or a, a ultra run or a trail run or whatever you're going to do, um, you want, really got to give your body that base, the time for it to regenerate and get stronger with each regeneration to be able to run those distances without getting injured. And we're like doing ourselves a huge disservice because not only are we not give, giving ourselves that time for our body to adjust, we're also not doing it correctly. <laughs> you know, we're, just, we're, we're not even running with proper form. So now I'm going to beat up my body improperly and I'm going to not even give it time to get stronger by doing the intervals, by taking the time to do what it needs to do. Right. When we see that, we see that also, we see both yeah. sides of it. Yeah. So, oh, I mean, and honestly, it's like, if you, um, I think that where people get lost a little bit is that some people like to have a big race on their schedule because it keeps right. them motivated. You know, and that we see that quite a bit too. And I always say it's it's great. It's a great way to stay motivated, but take, you know, taking some time to just drop a distance a little bit and work on your pace will actually re-motivate you to even want to go yeah. out there more, I think. Get that build that yeah. confidence and get yeah. that speed up and, and get going. And I think it is really important, like you talk about, is push we talked about last week, the pushing of the wall, the pushing of the pain, the struggle bus. If I can do this, you know, this short interval, this hill repeat and realize, oh, wow, I could do that. I was able to do that. That really wasn't that hard. Or last week, I felt like I was going to die. This week, it doesn't feel quite as bad. You know, right. every time yeah. you're getting better, you're just going to get stronger. Your cardiovascular system is going to get stronger. And you're going to be able to then, like you said, go out and actually race that 5K. And so talk real quick about how you as a coach, if I came to you, and I said, I want to do a 5K. What's the difference between a racing a 5K and just I'm going to go run a 5K? Can you give me like as a coach how, how you see that differently and how you would train me differently for that? Well, sure. Well, the first question I'd say is, is what's your history of running? You know, like, have you run okay. a 5K before? Is yeah. this your first 5K? So, and that's it. And it's a big difference. And by the way, that was me for a long time. Uh, guys, I, I only raced, I never raced. I only ran like I yeah. was a participant That's and even neat. my first, <laughs> and, yeah, which is fine. And even uh, my first few marathons was same. Like I was running, but I wasn't worried about where was I placing or anything. And I remember when my coach said, well, would you like to try racing? And I was like, well, I am racing. And he said, no, you're not <laughs> racing. You're just, you're just running. You're just getting through. Right. And it's funny because back then I was an 830 pace person. And so he's like, what's your 5K? I'm like, 830. What's your 10K? 830. What's your marathon? 830. 830. He's like, do you understand? You have no difference in your pacing. Like you're just so stuck 
8.30. And so I started training for racing and he was right. My race pace turned out to be about a 6.30. And wow. it was so much fun, you know, to go through, but I had to start at 5K. And okay. so the difference is, and this is what I would say to someone else, do you want to run a 5K? Do you want to get through the race, feel good about running the 30 minutes or whatever it is it's going to take you and run pain-free? We're going to train you. Do you want to race the race? You want to leave it all on the race course and really feel what do I have? Like how could to race a 5k? We'll train you. And here, what's the difference? So first of all, you both will, both runners say both racers are going to learn the skill of running no matter what speed or distance we need to all do the same elements of training, right? It's pose, right. fall, pull. So fall is acceleration. So if someone wants to run faster, then they need to spend more time with the fall element. So I would give them more uh, training in their, in that realm, you know, in your, you're going to do your intervals will be at a higher fall angle, right? You're not going to get a different training though. That's what's so wild. Like if you're really learning how to run and learning how to run correctly, then you want to learn how to race. We start testing your ability to hold your fall angle at different fall angles. And then we find where you can hold and that's where you're going to go race. And that's what I have so much fun with people because so many of our runners come through and they were so inefficient when they started, they don't even see themselves as runners. Yeah. And guys, it's not about, we don't, we're not concerned with how fast you are. That's not what we're saying. We're saying that you probably have more potential for speed than you thought you had. And the more efficient you are, like that's a byproduct anyway. So even the person that just wants to get through their 5K will probably still be a little faster. But if someone says, I want to race a 5K, then you've got to train like you're racing. So your interval yeah. days are really about going on, you know, feeling that high fall, trying to get a little bit more speed. You're going to have, you know, you, you're, going to te you're going to time yourself more. It'll be more important to see your data, your feedback from, you know, what's your pace, what's your cadence. So we'll look at things like that more versus the runner that just wants to get through a run. We're going to talk more about how'd you feel? How'd you feel in your run? Were you able yeah. to continue running? So we'll have very similar conversations about the running, except one is way more by feel and one's going to be more by true data. Yeah. So if you want to work with Runner X and Coach Valerie, uh, we do have uh, plans that, that come through at any given time. And so to stay in touch with us, you need to make sure you're on our email list. So if you've just come across this, uh, maybe you just came across it on our Instagram or our YouTube channel or Facebook, or maybe a friend shared this podcast with you, we want you to be part of our community and get our emails and find out how you can work with us. Go to RunRxQuiz, that's R-U-N-R-X-Q-U-I-Z dot com. Run our X quiz or go to our website. You'll see about halfway down the site. You can uh, go ahead and take our quiz and that will get you on our mailing list. If nothing else, you'll be kept informed with when we've done some new podcasts. If we have a clinic um, in your area, which is very rare, but who knows? It could happen when our next clinic is going to be in 2024, as well as when we're opening up those these opportunities to work with Valerie. And so I hope you'll take it. It's run our X quiz. Thanks, guys. Thank you for joining us on the RunRx podcast. If you'd like to know more, join us at www.runrx.fit. And if you have additional questions that you'd like answered on the podcast, email us at support at runrx.fit.